welcome back dear students under algebra number theory we are now in unit 5 classical theorems and multiplicative functions this is my lecture 2 contains wilson theorem problems so we had already seen in lecture 1 the statement and proof of wilson theorem and also the small introduction about the unit so now let's get into the presentation so before starting the presentation i would like to give a small recap of uh, the statement of wilson theorem just to refresh if p is a prime then p minus 1 factorial is congruent to minus 1 mod p so i already told you that mod p divides p minus 1 factorial plus 1 which i gave in the note of my previous lecture so wilson theorem is exclusively applied for factorial functions factorial congruence functions also we had stated and proved a lemma for wilson theorem so that lemma was having the concept of self invertible i hope everybody remember so the same concept is applied here so first problem find the self invertible least residue modulo 7 so how to prove this or how to find a solution for this particular problem now let me name x as a self invertible least residue mod 7 finally i'm going to get the values of x so now what is least residue you hope i hope you remember that is a square there yeah, we had written a square so a square is a into a in the same way x into x here x dot x is congruent to 1 mod 7 because it is given mentioned as modulo 7 so x dot x congruent to 1 mod 7 implies that so x dot x can be written as x square okay so x square congruent to 1 mod 7 now can i write x square congruent 1 mod 7 as x square minus 1 congruent to 0 mod 7 yes i can then what can i say by that lemma this modulo number divides this particular number so which implies 7 divides x square minus 1 so which implies what can i say 7 divides x minus 1 or 7 divides x plus 1 i've just written the factors of nothing else so from here what can i say x minus 1 is congruent to 0 or x plus 1 is congruent to 0 that is what that is the actual meaning of 7 divides x minus 1 and 7 divides x plus 1 modulo 7 so from here i can say x can take the two values x is equal to congruent to 1 or congruent to minus 1 mod 7 so if it is plus 1 what will i get i can write it as or 6 also right if it is since minus 1 i can write 6 so the self invertible numbers are 1 and 6 Okay, if I write six, I'll get one minus one, and uh, if I get one, I'll get six here. So these are self-invertible numbers, which means that if I write plus one, the actual number was remainder is six like that. Okay, so this is how I prove the particular uh, solve the particular first problem. So self-invertible residue modulo. Let's get on to the second uh, problem. So now they're asking you to verify Wilson theorem. P minus one factorial, which is congruent to minus one mod P, which is the Wilson theorem. If P is equal to seven, they want you to prove it for P is equal to seven. It's a very simple problem. Solution. So given P is equal to seven, so in place of P, you replace it by seven. So what will happen here? If I replace it by seven, so I'll be getting seven minus one factorial. Seven minus one factorial is six factorial. So what is six factorial? Six factorial is seven twenty. So if I replace on my left hand side p minus one factorial by seven twenty, what do I arrive at? 
is congruent to minus 1 mod 7. So my remainder is minus 1. So hence p minus 1 factorial is congruent to minus 1 mod p when p is equal to 7. So before starting the problem, we should understand that p is prime number. So automatically p is 7. So p is a prime number. So we can proceed. So for every prime number, Wilson theorem is proved. So we can prove it for any prime number. So let's uh, get on to the next uh, problem. So now they are asking, find the remainder when 18 factorial is divided by 19. So divided by, always remember divided by modulo number. That will be taken as the modulo number. So we are going to divide that particular 18 factorial by 19 and I am going to find out the remainder for it. So how do I start? Since 19 is a prime number, so automatically we can proceed. By Wilson theorem, we have, you can write the statement of Wilson theorem. Statement of Wilson theorem says that P minus 1 factorial is congruent to minus 1 mod P, where P is prime. So, since 19 is prime, I will substitute 19 in place of P. So, 19 minus 1 factorial is congruent to minus 1 mod 19. So, what is 8, 19 minus 1? 19 minus 1 is 18 factorial is congruent to minus 1 mod 19, which is congruent to 18 mod 19. So, if it is minus 1, automatically 18 short of it. This I am writing it in a reverse process. So, hence the remainder is 18. Are able to understand? So, the remainder is just 1, short of 1. This is minus 1 in the sense, it is short of minus 1. So, we will be writing it as 18. Okay, if it is plus 1, we will go the backwards. Okay, so since it is minus 1, we go back uh, this way. Okay, I hope you understood this problem. Uh, we move on to the next problem. So, commute the remainder when 3 raised to the power 302 is divided by the number 5. So, again I see that 5 is a prime number. So, here there is no factorial number. But then too, we can apply the congruences, the linear congruence and we can get the solution. So, now, how to uh, split up this 300, 3 power 302. It's a very huge number, big number, 302. So, to find the power of 3, raised to the power of 302, it's going to be a tedious process for us. So, what we'll do, we'll get the nearest, uh, we'll go to the closest reminder where we get 1 when divided by 5. So, 3 to the power, we have to find a number when it is raised to the power of 3. The number 3 is raised to some power. We get a value, right? For example, 3 raised to the power 1 is 3. 3 raised to the power 2 is 9. 3 raised to the power 3 is 27. And 3 raised to the power 4 is 81, right? So, from these numbers, we got to get to the closest number where we get 1. So, the most suitable number we are going to choose can be 81 because till 80 it is perfectly divisible by 5 and the remainder we are getting it as 1. So, in the powers of 3, I am choosing 81 because my remainder is 1 which is very simple number. So, once I get 1, it will be easy for me to solve. So, I have to search for a number such that the remainder is 1 when I divide it by 5. Okay. For all the problems, you can follow the same method uh, saying that you have to choose a particular number which when divided by that modulo number yields the remainder as 1. So, now 3 to the power 4 is 81. Right. Now, again, I have to go closer to the power of 302. So, how can I write further 302? So, my better option will be, I can split up this 302 as 300 plus 2. Okay. So, 300, 3 to the power 300 into 3 to the power 2. This is how I am going to split the problem. So, for 3 to the power 300 can be drawn from 3 to the power 4. So, already we know what is 3 to the power 4. 3 to the power 4, the whole power 75. So, 75 fours are 300. So, why am I choosing a number 
for power 300 because 300 is again divisible by that's a power which is suitable for 5. So now what do I do? 3 to the power 4 raised to the power 75 is congruent to 1 raised to the power 75 mod 5. There is another theorem which is um, stated in Wilson theorem where when A is congruent to B mod P, A power N is also congruent to B power N mod P. The theorem. So when 3 to the power 4 is congruent to 1 mod 5, I can raise the left hand side to the power of 75 and the right hand side to the power of 75 and the result does not change. So left hand side will be 3 to the power 300 which is congruent to 1 raised to any power is going to be 1. So till 3 power 300 I am having 1. So see how the problem has been simplified. The only thing I have remaining number is 2 now. 2. So 3 power 302 is equal to. I should not use a congruent symbol here. Equal to. How can I split this 302? 300 plus 2. Which is further equal to. When the base are the same I can split up the pass. So 3 to the power 300 dot 3 square. Now up to 300. 3 to the power 300 we have uh, done it. Now we just have to find it for 3 square. So, for 3 square, what is 3 square? 3 square is 9. So, how can I write it in congruent symbol which is congruent to 4 mod 5? How did I get 4? Dividing by 5. So, if I divide 9 by 5, I will be getting a reminder as 4. So, now 3 to the power 302 is congruent to 3 to the power 300 which I got it as 1 and 3 square. 3 square, I got it as 4. So, this is what I am writing. So, 1 into 4 will give you 4. So, therefore, 3 to the power 302 is congruent to 4 mod 5. So, therefore, the remainder is 4. I hope everybody understood uh, these 4 problems. So, let us continue in lecture 3. Thank you so much.